In this video, I'm going to address the problem of a ripped whisper keypad. It's one of the most common mistakes that we make in putting our instrument together. And so you need to be able to replace your whisper keypad in an emergency. It's five easy steps with just some simple materials from your local hardware store and your music store. Materials you need to have on hand are shellac that you can get from a music store repair shop, the proper size pad. You can substitute hot melt glue for a glue gun for the shellac in an emergency, a heat source, a screwdriver that fits the screw of your bassoon, a feeler gauge, cassette tape, or a piece of cigarette paper, a silver tarnish cloth, and some type of improvised buffer material like tape. It's a smart idea to carry a spare pad with you at all times. Oval pad, 12 millimeter, 11 millimeter, 10 millimeter. Find the one that fits your bassoon. Fox Professional, Fox Student, and Heckle for the 12 millimeter, 11 and 10 on many other makes. The first thing you want to do is take the whisper key pad off by loosening the top screw and then put it back in the post a couple of turns so you don't lose it. You're in a pinch. This leaves the back of the pad very black if you use a cigarette lighter. Hold the back of the pad cup over a heat source and melt the glue that's underneath the pad. You can see it bubble or just start to move and then pull it off. Heat the back of the pad cup again to melt the glue so that you can clean it up with a paper towel. And wipe around the edges. Heat up the bottom of the pad cup and then touch the glue to the middle of the pad cup and then swirl it around a little bit trying to put on just a little bit of glue. Set it down while it's still hot and pick up the pad upside down. Hold it between your fingers, fingernails, heat up a little glue and dab some in the middle and try to put on just as little as you can to coat the back of the pad. Then put them together with everything still hot and then gently push on the pad and move it around, centering it in the pad cup and making it parallel. Then let it cool for a few moments. After it cools, wipe the soot off the back of the pad cup or the tarnish with a silver cloth or just any rag and then put it back on the horn. Next we need to make sure that the pancake key closes the whisper key on the vocal. So the first step is to make sure that the bridge of the whisper key is touching the arm of the pancake key. If it is not, improvise with some tape or paper or anything that you have on hand to take up the space. You can use a little piece of paper or cassette tape to see if it's touching. Next, check to make sure that there's no excess play between the whisper key spatula and the connections in the middle of the wing joint. And this one, they're fine. Often, you'll need to put a little piece of tape underneath so that there won't be a double action. You'll need to check the entire setup to make sure that when you push the low E key, it closes 
the, nib, the pad on the nib of the bocal. Take a piece of cassette tape or paper to see if the pad touches the nib of the bocal. If it does, you're good to go. But if it does not touch, then you'll need to put some type of material between the bridge rocker arm and the camelback key casting of the whisper key pad so that the pad moves closer to the nib. If it touches very, and the low E pad doesn't touch, you'll then need to remove material on the bridge arm.